What's up everybody, it's your boy Wes Grand, you're watching Sub Urban Nerd, this channel where I give my nerd views on today's nerd news, well, I also give my reviews on movies, and today I'm gonna give, actually like a spoilers kind of recap review, I've done a review already of Ready Player One, but I kind of want to do a little bit more in-depth review of some sort of spoilers and some plot holes and kind of like things that I kind of issues that I saw with the movie. Starting off with the movie, like I said, I have to just tell you right off the bat, I love this movie. It was a great movie. If I gave it a grade, I still have to give it an A, even though there were some things that I kind of noticed that didn't quite make sense, but it still worked with it. And um, Steven Spielberg, yeah, did an awesome job making this movie. This move, this this idea, this concept was made for a director like Steven Spielberg to do because he just knows how to create these worlds and environment and this these fantasy worlds where you can just get lost in and. Like I said, he just did an amazing job. Now, I'm gonna start off with a uh, tear, tear shedding in like oh, Wade, Wade Watts, the main character. Um, he was really good. I liked him. Uh, this, I, I, he was a, he was good protagonist. I liked his character. I liked his avatar. I liked his personality. Um, one of the plots that I saw was when Sorrento called and told him that, oh, like, he's gonna blow up the place. First of all, you're gonna blow him up. Why tell him you're going to blow him up, then have the things almost there? Like, if you're going to blow someone up, have those bombs set and ready, son. Like, you're going to die. What? Now. Boom. Go out. But no. He tells Wade Watts, like, yeah, so, like, it won't... Oh, so you're not gonna work with us? I was hoping you'd say that. So now I'm gonna kill you. And then he was like, wait, no, no, no. Uh, he was like, oh, the, that they saw him go into his apartment or whatever, like about three hours ago and have him come out. So we're gonna blow it up. So and then he's running to it. And meanwhile, you see these little drones flying towards it. So it's like, they ain't even get to the thing yet. They fly past Wade to let, and then they start setting these bombs. And when he's calling his mom, and then the douchebag, no, when he's calling his aunt, and then the douchebag boyfriend picks up and was like, thanks for the suit. And then they start setting, 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 setting. And he's running there. All of a sudden, they blow up. And I'm like, dog, how much time did he just give you if you were actually in the building? You might have been able to survive. Like, you literally got time to climb, take off your stuff, go, run outside, climb out the hole, run down the hole. Like, you were running towards your tower when it blew up. So if you were on there and he told you, you literally probably could have just like, slid down the slide, whatever, got down the way you know he got, and bam, he would have would, been good. So that was one major thing. I'm like, why did they do that? Second of all, like I said, um, I know I'm just going off of the test. I'm just going off the top of my head because like I said, it ain't like I was writing notes, but I like like I said, there was good things, there was bad things. Um, the the other thing, the, the way he passed the first test, it's kind of weird. Um, because all he, he just went reverse, you know what I'm saying? Spoiler alert, he went reverse to win the first race. Now, I'm like, after the first person opened the portal to that race, they said it's been five years. So you're telling me in five years, not one person thought to go in reverse? Dog, if I haven't won in five years, I would have straight up just turned the car around and gone in reverse. Like, most likely, like, or I would have just pressed reverse. Like, I'm just saying, it's a gamer. That's just a common sense kind of thing. Like, if if you if no one ever wins in five years going forward, maybe there's a secret secret cut. And I tell you right now, if you like that race, if you like that race that you saw with all those cars or whatever, there's a game. There's a game that's out, and it came out for the PS3. I don't know if it came out for the Xbox, but I know it's out for the PS3. It was made by Disney, Disney Studios. It's called Split Second. This game, you change the environment of, like, while you're racing, you actually change the environment and change the roads while you're racing. Like, yo, if you like the way, like I said, Ready Player One did the whole thing with the King Kong and all this stuff, yo, it's straight up like that. You can set, they, they've got those little boulder things swinging too. You've got, you, at some point, you've got a plane crashing, you got to dodge underneath it. I'm telling you, check out Split Second. I'll try and see if I can get the link for it or something like that down below for, for just gameplay. But if you can find that game, because I have that game, if you can find that game, get that game because it is worth it. It is worth it just to play sheer, sheer, sheer fun. It is sheer fun. Only problem with it is they have what you call rubber band 
um, opponents. So no matter how far ahead you get of them, when you're close to the finish line, these dudes will just catch right up. But sorry, going off a tangent of that. Going back to the Ready Player One. Um, yes, at some point, like when he's talking to the girl or whatever, and like basically he's you know saved the the motorcycle, and then he starts becoming cool with Artemis, who is a pretty much a what you call the typical badass female, sort of like, like, they definitely did get their ideas from a lot of different influences, Matrix of one of them, actually that's why they have a poster of it, so um, Artemis is pretty much like the Trinity, uh, and in fact that she's a badass and everybody online knows of her, and um, he falls in love with her pretty quick, which is understandable because he is a, um, I, you would call him a nerd that doesn't go out much, he doesn't really date, he's never kissed a female, so therefore, yeah, he, there's some girls showing him attention. I ain't gonna front. The uh, the uh, the avatar of Artemis looked sexy as hell. I ain't. I'm not gonna front. I I know I shouldn't be thinking like that, but she was. She was sexy. Deal with it. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. I know y'all thought she was sexy too. Don't try and lie to yourself. It was real, but it was fake. But yeah. So so Artemis, typical badass. Everything. She figures it out. They team up together. I definitely like H. H was a good uh, person, a good partner that they had. And definitely the twist, that, like I said, this is spoilers. The twist is that it's a female. And the whole speech that she was given about, like, yo, how does he know Artemis isn't some 300-pound guy living in his mama's basement named Chuck? You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> but it turned out that it was sort of reverse how she was a female pretending to be a dude. But... I think she was maybe like bisexual or sex. I don't know because you know what I'm saying like when when they were in the the shining and that naked lady started filling up on her she was like I'm gonna go with it until she saw she was like a zombie then she was like uh uh they ain't trying to deal with that but like uh there was some other things there was the 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 the, the fighting the the whole the the main bad guy Sorrento Sorrento. He was a typical douche. I did like his avatar, though. I liked his avatar because his avatar looked badass. Like, the yo, dude was like God Diesel. But the dude did nothing. Like, he he could fight, I guess, in, in the avatar thing. But uh, Wade, you know, like, he finished him off with that Hadouken. And, of course, you know that 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 that, that coin was important. Like, when he flipped it, uh, you know, the first time around, I didn't notice it. I'm not going to front like I knew every Easter egg that was happening or everything. Like I caught, But I do pay attention, and sometimes I do notice things before it happens. So that coin did turn out to work out, but I did forget about the coin. But, yes, it was it was really great. Um, who, else, who else? Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg, yo, I didn't. The first time I was watching it, it I was like, yo, he looks familiar, yo. He looks familiar. Simon Pegg was playing the, the, the friend. And I... I'm going to tell you guys right now, this, vo this movie actually did move me, because there was three moments where it actually moved me. The first, mo the first moment that moved me was that speech, the speech where he was telling everybody to rise up and go against the one IOIs or whatever, or to basically take down Sorrento. That speech was very, very strong, and I definitely felt it. Like I felt like getting up out of my seat, like, yeah! <laughs> like, uh... But yes, yeah, so I definitely felt that. The next was when the egg, when he finally got that egg, and a tear came down. Like, yo, like, this was, you could definitely tell this was someone who loved this game. This was someone, like, a true fan. That's why the guy, did, that's why Sorrento didn't shoot him. Because he saw how much he really did care about this, this, this game. This game wasn't just a game to him. It was, it was something very important, very special. And I felt that. And then last of all, was when he ran up to, uh, he, when he spoke to Simon Pegg's character. And the guy was like, no. The, the, the girlfriend, I forget what the girlfriend's name was. Uh, she wasn't, she wasn't, the, she wasn't well, his biggest regret. You are his biggest regret. You losing you as a friend was his biggest regret. It wasn't losing a female, it was losing his best friend. The one friend. And that, I, I... When it comes to friendship, this is what I'll tell you. Friendships are very hard to come by. They're very hard to come by as far as people that you could rely on and be friends. True friends, there's no time limit. It's timeless. You guys could not see each other for years. But the second you guys meet back up, it's like not a, not a minute has skipped. That's a true friend. And it's someone that doesn't drag you down. A friend that's always there to lift you up, no matter what. 
that's a friend. A friend that tells you their opinion and doesn't sugarcoat it. And you know what I'm saying? And it's good to have people that don't always agree with you. But someone that will just be real with you. That's a friend. So, Simon Pegg was that friend to, you know, uh, Holiday. And it just... Just the way, the way it went down, you find out in the story, basically had him sign a contract, basically share, sign away shares. And that's one thing definitely I loved about the end, where the high five, they actually, they split it up into six, bringing in Simon Pegg because Simon Pegg knows the whole thing. So, like, it was them all working together. And Simon Pegg finally was a part of something he helped create again. So that that's, like, I definitely loved that part of the movie. It's great. You guys got to see it. It's just... I can't go in too much because if I did, I'd be going for like half hour or something like that. But I'm, I was trying to keep it short. Sorry, but I just I had to give one of my, like I said, the one of the big kind of like flaws that I saw with that whole bomb and blowing up thing. Just more, but like I said, I, I'm not trying to keep this thing going. If you guys want to see more or hear more, just all you got to do is just comment down below. Tell me, tell me you want to hear more and I'll make another video for it. Because like I said, Ready Player One has so many spoilers, so many things that I would love to talk about. But it's just I don't want to just take up so much time on a video like this. So, um, like I said, Gundam. Gundam, that's all I gotta say. Gundam, hell yeah. So remember to subscribe, check out my, um, my last, check out my review of Ready Player One and check out the playlist of my movie reviews. So remember, I'm Wes Grant, you've been watching Sub, Urban Nerd, you've just been nerdified. Catch you guys on my next review.